Hello to all Reaper users. This video is about how to use my JSFX plugin MIDI's iPad controller. First, you need to add the plugin to the effects section. Search for the plugin by the name MIDI's iPad controller. Well, this is a general view of my plugin. Yes, the plugin can resize. We know that this plugin is a controller, it just controls MIDI signals. So we need a synthesizer. We will use the free, simple, but powerful synth, Helm by Matt Title. Also, let's add a limiter to avoid too loud sounds. We'll also need a tuner to detect the note from the sound, so we can test the plug in that way. Let's tune the synthesizer a little bit. For an example of how the plugin works, we will need a sine wave. It sounds just right. And so the plugin. The plugin has four modes of operation. Pitch wheel. One note. Grid. And grid pitch. Let's go back to the pitch wheel mode. In the center you see a big square. That's our pad. If you place mouse cursor over pad and press left mouse button, plugin will start to send MIDI signals to synthesizer or any other plugin that are located down the chain of effects. In this mode, which is now pitch mode, by moving the mouse along the Y axis you change the pitch values, which are immediately transmitted to the synthesizer. This is the pitch quantize button, and it is responsible for the quantization function. Here you see a scale that displays the accuracy of the note. We need the pitch quantize function to send the correct musical values, roughly speaking, to hit the note, and to synchronize with the synthesizer. You can see the pitch dimension buttons. The default value is 48. I will now adjust the pitch band value of the synthesizer. Pitch band is responsible for how many semitones up or down the sound will change with the end values of the pitch wheel. Let's set it to 48, the same value as our plugin has. At the same time we will remove polyphony, because we don't need it. Once again set it to 48, same as with plugin. In order to make quantization work correctly, let's go back to the plugin. Now let's move the mouse pointer on the Y axis of the pad, and watch the tuner. It looks like it is working correctly. We turn off the pitch quantization, and move the mouse along the Y axis of the pad again. You can see that the pitch does not tend to align the note. Now we turn on the quantization mode. Everything works. The next control is note selection. Note selection allows you to select a main note or shift the scale. We can also select the octave, and the octave selection buttons are responsible for this. And these are the mod wheel and cutoff buttons. Most often these parameters are used for the filter cut and resonance. Let's try it. To assign the modulation wheel to the filter cutoff frequency, we have to do the following. Let's move the cutoff frequency of the synthesizer a bit. Go to the param tab, then MIDI link, then CC 14 bit and choose the 0133 mod wheel. Check it out. Yes, mod wheel is linking. Let's turn down the resonance. As you noticed, mod wheel changes when you move the mouse along the X axis. Pitch on the Y axis. If you additionally press shift on your keyboard, the pad marker in this mode will move only along the Y axis. 
If you press control, it will move only along the X axis. If we disable mod wheel or cutoff button, we will be able to set constant values manually. That means that the pad will stop affecting mod wheel or cutoff values respectively. Let's assign cutoff to the synth filter resonance. By the way, mod wheel or cutoff can be assigned to any moving element of the synthesizer. But this is a question of creativity and needs. And so, let's move the resonance a little bit. Let's go to the param tab. Then MIDI link. Now we need the parameter 74. To do this we look for CC and choose 74 brightness slash cutoff freak. Done. As you may have noticed, the cutoff position on the pad is a gray marker. It moves in the opposite direction from the red one that indicates the mod wheel. Now the resonance has no effect on the sound. But let's turn on mod wheel and cutoff, and also the reverse button, which is responsible for inverting the values of mod wheel and cutoff. And here, you can already hear the resonance working. Let's pay attention to the direction of the mouse, and the behavior of mod wheel and cutoff on the synthesizer. The next mode is one note. We see and hear that by moving the pad along the y-axis, the notes now change, not the pitch values. Let's change the note. Now it is the note F. We can see this on the indicator next to note selection. When you change the position of the mouse pointer on the y-axis, the octaves of the note change. Let's limit the number of octaves by the octave range buttons. We can see on the large note scale that the number of octaves has decreased. As for the behavior of mod wheel and cutoff, it remains the same. The shift and control buttons on the keyboard also work. Let's set the note C and press the single note button. We have activated additional buttons that are responsible for selecting a scale. The playback of the notes will correspond to the selected scale. Try it all, it's quite interesting. Now, on note selection, we can change the starting note of the scale. For those who don't have enough standard scales, there is a custom mode. In this mode, you can set your own scale of notes. Let's move on to the next mode grid. As you see, the pad is divided into small pads, notes, 12 notes per 10 octaves. This allows you to create interesting transitions between notes and a wide range of octaves. In this mode, there is a slide delay option that allows you to simulate relatively smooth note transitions. The divide button divides the total length of the delay by the number of notes caught between the first and the last note. To start the process, click on the note and pull to either side.
The each button does not divide the delay between the notes. It means that each note has its own delay, in this case, 100 milliseconds. By pressing the off button we turn off the slide delay. Let's turn on the slide delay with the divide button. In this mode we can also use scales, including custom. Now it is a minor triad. It doesn't look very convenient, so we have the only scaled button. When you press this button, only the notes that are in the scale will be displayed. It's more convenient, isn't it? In this mode, mod wheel and cutoff work only in manual mode. This means we don't use the x-axis. Let's try other scales and play with the plug-in a bit. We can change the octave range. These changes also affect the pad. Did you notice that the pitch doesn't move? Yes, in this mode it also does not depend on the y-axis. But we can change the pitch by rotating the mouse wheel. The pitch wheel mouse function also has each, divide, and delay buttons. The return button is responsible for returning the pitch to the initial state, meaning to the center of the pitch wheel, value 64. When the return button is off, the pitch will not tend to go back. When the off button is pressed, there will be no smoothing. The pitch will move in steps according to the number of steps selected with the steps buttons. The keyboard button control is also involved in controlling this mode. If you press it, the note will freeze and you will be able to specify more precisely which note you need to move to. Grid Pitch Mode In this mode, the pad is also divided into 12 notes and 10 octaves, there is pitch quantization, the pitch moves on the x-axis, mod wheel and cutoff on the y-axis, and the starting position is always in the center of the pressed note. The pitch corresponds to the note we are pulling the mouse pointer to, you can see it by the horizontal line and the dot at the end. The line may jump up or down, within a pad, if we move to another octave. With quantization on, the line and sound always tend toward the center of the note. The behavior of the mod wheel and cutoff is similar to that of the pitch wheel in one note modes. The only difference being the y axis instead of the x axis.
We can also change the number of octaves, octave range buttons. We're done with the modes. What else? Yes, there is a choice between a red and gray theme, the red button, and a monochrome one, the gray button. And then there's the panic button. To be pressed if something went wrong and some MIDI signal got stuck somewhere, a note didn't disconnect, and so on. Well, that's all I wanted to tell you about the plugin. Be creative, experiment, the plugin allows you to achieve unusual and interesting sounds. And now let's have a little fun and try to do something. Recording the sounds took about 10 minutes. Attention! Turn down the sound. The sound can be very loud. Selecting and slicing the sounds took about an hour.
Thanks for watching.